Is XRP a sinking ship? We have some crazy announcements coming out from the XRP community, as well as we're gonna be diving into our favorite altcoins, products that have been pumping. If you guys watched last night's video, it's time to discover crypto. Capital flight is coming to the United States. The dollar is going to zero. And that's what makes Bitcoin so special. You have to have gone through a couple cycles to understand. Once the price is able to clear this level, the breakout is on its way. This is your indication to jump in now. <sighs> yeah, XRP, unfortunately, I do not think guys will ever hit that $500 today. But today we have a very special guest. Not only do we have DZ, we have an XRP maximalist joining us today to talk about and break down why this thing is going to be going to $10,000. Leo, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? <laughs> what is up, guys? I don't know about the, the name XRP maximalist, but you know I've been in the XRP space for a while. There's even that. an XRP pillow behind you, which is just wild. Oh, to see that pillow, what That's what are we doing? Yeah, yeah, we didn't plan perfect. that. Uh, uh, but, he brought it from home, actually. He yeah. brought it across the pond. But we I have, have a personal, <laughs> a personal collection. A personal collection. Well, we have green in the markets. It's feeling good today. We also have green coming out of DZ's dogs, apparently. I, <laughs> you had a little bit of a story you wanted uh, to share I mean, today. I, I could share the story. Yeah, I came home to uh, feces everywhere. My dogs, uh, you know, uh, my fiance, she's helping a friend move across the country, her old best friend from uh, school. And so them two, they're, they're driving across the country. So it's just me and the dogs right now. I was gone for about eight hours, and it just wasn't enough time. So I'm, I'm gonna leave home early. Don't worry, the dogs will be okay. But yeah, it was right on the front door. Like they back the the anus right up to the door. I opened the front door and just shoo, I, I smeared it everywhere. I didn't even see it. <laughs> I walk I walked past it. I'm like, God dang, it stinks in here. What's going on? And then I, I kind of look around. I don't see anything, and I, I turn back, and oh yeah, I just stepped right over it. Luckily, I didn't step in it. And so it hey, wasn't as bad as it that, could That's have been. a win. That's a win. Because yeah. you would have shown up to work and had something on your blazer and be like, Josh, do I smell weird? And I'll be like, well, you know, the only thing smelling weird is actually P's price action, guys. Oh, you know, oh, oh you're yeah. going to have me segue <laughs> from a story of percent. Ow! That was, hey, that's what we do here. But Bitcoin, guys, $71,000 on the charts now. $3,500 on Ethereum. Almost $3,600. Uh, coming back up a little bit. Solana, $186. We have XRP, though. As you can see, a little bit down within the hour, the last 24 hours, there's some crazy announcements. We're going to be breaking down with you guys in just a second. Uh, we have Dogecoin here up over 20 cents, hey, 120 cents. Yeah, we're uh, yeah now above 20 cents. And what was the last coin I bought live on stream? Oh, I bought a little Doge. Was it Dogecoin? I oh. felt like an idiot doing Is it, it kind of I like didn't. just when you buy something, it goes up? Uh, Well... That reminds me of Velo. Why mm. don't you tell the... I see people typing about Velo hey, already. You Ve told people to buy Velo. Velo, Aero... Well, hey, they took their Aerodrome, which you called... And actually, the man behind the curtain called that like 18 cents as <sighs> well. Uh, you guys got in like massively early. Then we saw a lot of our community rotate those profits into Velo, which is up now over 400% since the initial call. But we have... You have some breaking news. I, I have I have the Velodrome uh, chart up right now. It is up seventy oh percent. Oh my gosh! Right dude. now in the twenty four hours. This isn't for a month. This isn't since January first. It's up seventy percent today. Wow! Uh, so if anybody who just jumped in on uh, Josh's call yesterday, guys, you're doing great. Enjoy the profits. You're welcome here. Dogecoin here, twenty one cents. Cardano, sixty five cents. I actually seen some a little bit more upside here. Breaking away now. From Avalanche, it's now it was like a hundred million dollars between Avalanche and Cardano at one point. Now it's over two billion dollars separated. Avax here, fifty four dollars, and the other top movers. Well, you know, at least for the top twenty tokens, they're moving all right. But you guys know the drill. You have to smash that like button because if you like this channel, that means your project will pop up in the top twenty four hour movement. We have Dogecoin as the lead mover here, of course, with Bonk and Floki. Meme coins are rallying right now, seeing a bit of a kickback and a little bounce into the market. Are you just going to skip over Bitcoin Cash, huh? Oh well, I don't <laughs> deserve a mention. I don't talk about trash. Okay. Oh, uh, you know, I could, I could comment <laughs> on the thumb. I could. I, I don't want to do that. You know, we got the XRP guy right next to me, so. <laughs> That's probably just, that's just who I am now. Yeah, I'm just, just the XOP guy. Uh, well, let's go to back up. Uh, who are you? Where? Why are you here? Yes. You know, where are you that's from? A good we, we just kind of Josh just glanced right over you. He was like, "Yeah, he likes yeah. XRP. Look at the pillow." Anyways, back to Bitcoin. So basically, I saw Josh's video yesterday. Hopped on a flight straight away. Came straight here just to basically stand up for the XRP community today. Um, but no, honestly, I started as a, a content creator. Most of you know me as Crypto with Leo 
on majority of my socials, basically. And, oh, wait, uh, not to cut you off. So uh, you focus on uh, like Leo and Capricorn, <laughs> or is, is a... I haven't it's, Capricorn, it's when you're born. Is that why you're a Leo? You're into lions, or is that no? Your name? My, my name is Leo. My oh, name is okay. Leonardo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, is uh, that your favorite Ninja Turtle as well? Exactly that. I the blue one. That's the yeah, that's one. Two swords one. on the back. The leader. The that leader. Yeah. The leader. Well, Donatello, well I, I believe you've worked with like Korea now and like multiple projects. Yeah. Part of the. It's not part of the XRPL community, but yeah. it's like there's a lot of cross. They're speaking up about it though. Like this is what I mean. Even the biggest projects and guys. I've been in the XRP space. I have my own project. Sorry, I'm looking at the camera here, not myself. <laughs> yeah. uh, I've, I've had, I have my own project on the XRPL called the the Core, Empire, Core Apes Club. Sorry, um, it, it's it's sad to see the the direction that the the XRP XRPL and XRP space is going. Uh, it's just a an old coin now. Yeah, this is coming know. from it's, somebody like deep in the ecosystem. Yeah, and we'll get to that article here. In just a second as well, guys. But, you know, besides the meme coins, those top movers are going to be Fetch AI, of course, uh, and Singularity Net. Now, I wanted to touch on these two. We're going to be skipping over a few cryptos in between, primarily because there's a lot of questions around what's going to happen now with Fetch, Singularity, and Ocean that Mm -hmm. they're turning into one crypto. So, guys, they won't exist anymore. Like, their tokens aren't going to be tickers anymore. But that doesn't mean your your, tokens aren't going to exist in your portfolio. They're just going to be a new token. So instead of being called Ajax or Fetch or Ocean, there's going to be a date if this proposal passes where all of your tokens convert into a new token called ASI. Now, you need to keep up to date. You need to turn on those notifications and subscribe to this channel because we will keep you up to date on what that actually means. Because if you hold Ajax, you might get only two to one of the tokens for the ASI. So you may have less tokens in your MetaMask, but it should equate to the same amount of money when the transfer does take place. And we'll keep you guys up to date on the latest there. However, for the top movers here that are losers today, ICP down 12%, but that is only fair because look at the seven days there, as well as Mantle right behind it. 45%, 42% movers on this last week right here. Uh, Bolt down roughly 10 to 12% on the day. You have Lido down 9%, Near Protocol 3.8%, WorldCoin, Optimism already, and we're really just kind of starting to see like break even. So not a lot of losers today which is a really good sign and is exactly why we're going to be talking about the products we want to accumulate in this episode. But for the first article, guys, we got to talk into this. Like, why is there a sinking ship? Why is Brad Garlinghouse and David Schwartz on the Titanic on the thumbnail? This isn't FUD. This isn't, you know, well, I mean, hey, there is some uncertainty to it, but this isn't, you know, clickbait. This is something that's actually happening in the markets today. Yesterday's thumbnail, where I was like, sell now, you don't want to touch this. That was clickbait. That was with XRP in a trash can with me, a gas mask on, right? But today, we have the Ripple CTO responding to Dev's decision to end XRP contribution. So what was this decision? Well, the end of a complete era, a do XRP. We had, it's time to move on. Dev Null Productions will no longer be contributing to the XRP ecosystem. Before I go into the reasons why, let's first explore on some of the ways we have contributed over the last six years. So these developers over the last, yeah, six years, the entire time that XRP hasn't hit an all-time high because Ripple's been selling off against you, uh, they are responsible for the no, that NYC. Checks out. Jesus Christ. Yeah, you're <laughs> was right. That too it was, good? It was January 2018. We're in March. Was, six wow, years on the dot. Six years yeah. and two months. We haven't had a new all-time high in six years. It and probably two hit the all-time highs, and then they're like, wow, this is gonna be the next greatest but, thing. Let me, let me yeah. double check January 2018. I'm 99% sure. Uh yeah, January 2018. Yep. On it. Yeah, there we go. NS, but yeah, they're responsible, guys, for the meetup organizer for NYC, which I kind of, I relate the New York City event. I'm, did you actually get to go to that? I, I didn't know. You didn't? No. Dude, I am sorry. Like, not to like trash on it. reminded me of like the producing scene in the Netflix documentary series oh, with like the party of them. I mean, like, that's majority They're making of money events. off all these, they're selling pills and drugs. People are dying and they're like, yeah. they have like all these girls on stage and they're all like, you're not bullish enough. You're not bullish enough. You know what's funny, bro? I'm like, I just came from the uh, NVIDIA conference. Okay. Uh, that, so in, How was it was that? in San Jose. It was insane, but it like proved that AI is in like a serious bubble right now. Like the the scale that it, the AI space has to grow at right now, like in the in the real world outside of crypto, is is exponential. It has to double every year, basically. Um, but it's the type of marketing you're talking about. There was a company that hired like two Lamborghinis to just hired drive up Lamborghinis. And, yeah, well, whether they hired, bought them, I don't yeah. know. Uh, oh, like to drive them and, like, up and down them. the road outside the conference, like for four days straight, just revving their engines. And I was just like, this is where the VC money is going. Like that's what. Like yeah. I just imagined some young guy. With twenty million in the account from VCs, this and like is what we need, we have to buy two Lamborghinis and just make as much noise as possible. All right, so you make it in crypto? Would you buy a Lamborghini? 
Uh, yes, of course. Like, you okay. <laughs> yes, of course. He's like, I wanted to rev it up and down the streets for four days. You know, it did make you question things. I it was getting, actually I him. They hired him. He was just like, yeah. bro, I'm, I'm obsessed with cars. And even I started getting annoyed at hearing those cars. Like, it's just. Yeah, I don't. I wonder if it was a young entrepreneur that was, that was their decision or if it was some like older boomer that was like, I'm no, going to relate to the youngsters. It has to be a boomer because they think that's the style of marketing because that was their form of marketing. It was in your yeah. face. It was just, you know out on the streets, whereas right now it's pretty much whatever you can put in front of as many faces. On, well, on I want to ask basically. you about Deepin and AI. We have a few articles coming up today that I want to dive into with that and see if it relates to the GTC Summit because we've made yeah. quite a few videos on this. We're like, that's going to be the peak of AI. And it actually yeah. turned out that right. was the top of the AI rally. There's at least a pullback now. Is it going to continue f- further? Yeah. I do think there's it, upside, it, but we'll get that in just a second. It blew my mind, the conference, though, yeah. like hearing them speak. Uh, we have, oh, we do have BitLab in just a second, so we'll get there in two seconds with Kelly. But we have, yeah, so they're responsible for the meetup organization for this massive event. They are the first amendment from the community improved to build the XRPL entirely. They built Rippled Analysis, NubD Analysis, XRP Intel, Ledger City, uh, guys, I mean, the list goes on here with what they've developed in this ecosystem. So their justification to this, why they are leaving the XRPL. So after all of this, why are we leaving? They built so much. It comes down to faith or rather the lack thereof. A major catalyst for this action was the decision by the top leadership of Ripple to sell their XRP at the expense of retail investors. Guys, if you're someone that's, told, I hold XRP, he holds XRP. I'm sure you've held XRP. I know Still the, the man behind the curtain, our, our, our based person from the, the blockchain basement here, Drew, holds XRP, right? There's just a point where diversity matters. And if you become a max, you got to admit sometimes, guys, between Taco Stan and Jed McCaleb to the sell-off we've seen, it exists. Even though the SEC dropped the charges against those individuals, this was a major attack on the community ecosystem. And after all, uh, that we know. So this is why they decided to leave it. But the entire fault does not lie with XRP. Rather, also the XRPL Foundation is to take blame in equal part, if not more. For years, we've watched as that organization, which is mandated to serve the best interests of the large community, sought to prioritize their personal objectives and goals, also at the detriment of the supportive community. What's next for them? Well, we will continue to support their project, BlockTrack, I believe, which is a product which many happy customers are able to derive utility out of and we'll continue to explore other experimental co- uh, solutions. I don't know if they're going to go to the XR- or XLM, the competitor, but they're probably going to move somewhere. As far as our XRP-related enterprises, Ledger City is now all but a defunct project unless we find another application of the IP or brand. And we'll be letting the various XRP domains we own expire. So they are completely leaving the ecosystem. And this is just another domino to fall in the ever, never ending domino game that is falling, to, you know, obviously with, of course, XRP's price. Did you see so- the... SEC just requested $2 billion. billion. So that's why last night's video, I made a video on that, that they're they're still being attacked. And people have this, you know, they believe that XRP is the last to pump in cycles, that it's going to go to $10, it's going to go to $100. It was the first that really pumped in the last cycle. Yeah. Yeah. So in my video, I broke down pretty much, look, it can go to $2. Maybe this was a huge breakout that I didn't see yesterday, which is why we're covering it today. But it's just like, yeah, there's this is a $30 billion market cap token. So I'm yeah. looking now at other cryptos and other ecosystems yeah. like Velo or Aero, where we're seeing 300, 400% gains in 30 days. It's a great time for our community out here. Mm. So that is kind of the takeaway I wanted to just break down with you guys in the stream. But now we need to get to the charts. We need to see Bitcoin is pumping. It's at $71,000. We have altcoins starting to rip. Kelly, it's feeling bullish. We have the real BitLab, not any crazy name today. No, uh, no chart daddy, no... You know, Kelly's, <laughs> uh, I was going to say something that might not be PG, but, you know, there's always something interesting to watch with you. What are the charts speaking to you? Are they whispering to you? Is it bullish well, or to, is it bearish? Well, to the, to the name, I must say, there is only one BitLab. There are some impersonators Wait, out there. There's only one, one BitLab Academy. I uh, but I want to talk, and I'm going to talk as calmly as I can because I'm so aggressively bullish right now. I had a conversation that's going to be an uh, interview that's going to be released on Saturday on BitLab uh, that I did with Mark Yusko yesterday. And he told me a metric that absolutely blew my mind. And essentially, considering what the price in the market cap of Bitcoin is right now, did you know that only roughly $300 billion, that's right, only $300 billion so far has been converted from some other type of currency into Bitcoin. And how how can we have a 1.3, 1.4 trillion dollar market cap? Because we have an exponential multiplier as the value. This is that supply and demand dynamic. And getting into the charts now, yes, things are pumping, but th- just 
consider this about 86 billion dollars has entered bitcoin market in the past six months 86 billion so that means almost a third of all money that's been converted into bitcoin has been basically moved into this space in the last six months if you're not bullish on what's going on what's coming i don't know what to tell you i got a couple charts here and then i'm going to break down some ta uh considering where we're at right now we get so hung up on these small movements this is a 2011 cycle 2014 2018 we are essentially yes we're right on path for having that next parabolic move to the upside but there's some things we have to consider i know you guys yesterday but there's 15 billion dollars in options expiring tomorrow and this is important because this is between bitcoin and ethereum that 15 billion it's important because it's the first quarter that we're having options expire with institutional money also involved in this asset class in a major way the reason why this is important is because and this is why i'm starting this bullish is because there's very strong chance that between now and tomorrow when these options expire that we're gonna see some volatility there's a couple different uh, price points that are, you know, pain points and profit points, but we're having a, an abnormally large amount of people. Uh, and it's referenced in here as ITM. ITM means in the money. That's what we're here for. All of us want to be in the money, but these markets tend to move to basically hurt the most people. Now, do I think it's going to go down to the $50,000 target on Bitcoin and 2,600 on Ethereum? No, I don't. But the, the, the reason why this is important if you're trading is because with those price points, uh considered uh these market makers and these basically these financial service providers and etc that are uh, essentially here termed as dealers they will do things and make moves in the market to hedge their positions if they have a a, a large amount of people that are in the profit that they'll go in and basically we will see them basically moving the price back and forth uh you know battling for what direction is going to go so what i'm saying here is between now and tomorrow through, you know, through the close of tomorrow's daily candle, I would be uh, just, I don't want to say ignoring, but taking advantage of any downside price action, I'll, I'll put it that way, because there's likely going to be some whipsaw effects in the market. Now, there's something I want to really highlight here. Uh, Drew brought this up to me, and I'm seeing a lot of other people mention it. I, I also mentioned it on the BitLab stream, uh, stream a while back, but where we're at right now is very reminiscent to where we were when we uh, were basically bouncing our head against that uh, previous all-time high uh, in, uh, in 2017 into 2020. Uh, and this is one of those situations right here where we can see very reminiscent of what we're seeing uh, in the previous uh, market cycle to where we're at now. And similarly, if we look at this, look at this on the chart, this is all-time high we just had. This is a sell-off, which is about 18, 19% drop. And we have moved up beautifully with the inverted head and shoulders. We've broken out. We've come down, found support at a known level. And it's looking like, and remember, we cannot ignore those options expiries tomorrow. It's looking like we may be making a move up. I am not concerned uh, with any negative or, or bearish price action until, again, unless we break this $56,000, $57,000 level, which I don't see happening. There's too much bullishness. I marked out this level right here, 64,600 down to 64,100, because we still have to remember, we do have that CME futures gap that is down at that 64.5 sort of level. So if we do get choppiness over the next two days and we do get an area down here, this to me would be an absolute incredible buy in this zone before we move to the upside. Now, in terms of what we're looking like, and we have to consider a time basis, now, this is back to that story I was saying about previous cycles. You see how I have this measured out 31 days. If we go back in the cycle, let's just zoom back. Oops, let's just zoom back here and look at the 20 right here. This is this level, same level, instead of being above it, like we are now above the previous all-time high. Uh, last cycle, we were below it, but we also last cycle didn't have absolute monster capital flow channels like these ETFs FOMOing in and having people getting into this market that really not only on a speculative level, but a buying pressure level. Basically, we're seeing the same thing, but rather than being under all time high, we're doing the same thing, just sitting over it. But this was a 31 day uh, sort of consolidation period before we really had a breakout consolidation and continuation. And so we're seeing very we'll see if it plays out, but we're seeing something very similar right now. At the same level, this is a previous all-time high range, 64 to 69,000, and we're just chopping right around it, whipsawing as much as possible, trying to get people out of this market. Now, when we look at where we're at on a macro sense, 
This is a, a chart from Johnny King, another crypto friend of mine. But we're seeing a similarity in, on time-based things here as well, from the low to the high, 1,068 days, from the low to the high, 1,059, from the low to the high. Is this going to be shorter? Is it going to be longer? We're going to have to see how this plays out. But things are looking and sustaining in a very, very, very bullish way right now. And so I, I just want everybody to stay positive on the count of the Velodrome. You guys mentioned it, I think, yesterday on the stream. I, I did a video in the Discord for all the BitLab members on the 26th, and I told them I was rotating some profits out of Aerodrome into uh, Velodrome, and I actually, you know, I shared it this morning. Where the People that followed that move are already up 81% on that, Shoo. and things are looking beautiful. So if you guys want to get involved, we still have a deal going on. Until we break that all-time high, head over to lab.bitlabacademy.com forward slash Josh. And I'll put the link right here, if uh, Drew, if you can pin this, a uh, sign up, 30-day uh, free. Uh, you get access to that uh, at lab.bitlabacademy.com forward slash Josh. Get involved. That's a 30-day free trial as well as, I mean, yeah. talking about members, stream signal, everything. I'm <laughs> bullish. Let's Kelly. let the charge do the work. Adios. We always love it. Thank you, brother. Thank you for the charts here today. Yeah, guys, chat. I'm curious to know, let me know your Bitcoin price predictions for the Bitcoin halving. What do you believe Bitcoin is going to hit by that Bitcoin halving? Are we going to see 85K? Are some of you crazy thinking we're going to see 120K like some of these uh, financial gurus out there? Or are we going to be at 55,000? I'm very curious to know in the chat here. I, I did want to address some. Uh, someone said, uh, hey, guys, love that you said uh, by Terra or Luna. No, no, we, we never said that. Did not say that. I never said it back in the day. I... I no, y'all never. What do you say? It. Terra Luna, did you ever? Oh, someone, someone in chat like, did yeah, that. I saw your video yesterday. Oh no, yesterday. that's not that. Yeah, I know. So one, we've never talked about Luna. Two, that's just probably somebody that's just mad that they keep missing out on all these uh, amazing yeah. calls. Yeah, we got some know? Bitcoin maxis uh, in the chat. That's fine. Uh, someone had a prediction. No other coin will be around. Look, around that sounds 2050. like somebody <laughs> that would trust someone who tell them they have inside sources that XRP is going to hit four dollars some days. You know, it's just never going to happen. Well, speaking <laughs> of inside sources, you, you actually have a little bit of experience on the XRPL. Yeah. You just got like a minute. You know, just kind of briefly. Explain explain no, what is going on today in the XRPL. No, I just kind of wanted to premise it because I know there's a ton of like strong XRP community holders out there, you know, standing up for XRP in the comments. And I'm just coming from experience as someone who's actually, you know, built a project on the XRPL for Apes Club. Uh, we have the official project of Corium, basically. Um, and just, you know, I'm very close with a ton of the key projects like on XRP, the biggest NFT marketplace on the XRPL. A lot of these projects are having a genuine problem with the lack of support coming from the XRPL and the XRPL Foundation. Um, so this isn't just like a, a random thing Josh is bringing up. No, that there is a problem, a systemic problem on the XRPL, that there is a lack of support in general. They're kind of just neglecting it and pushing it to the side. And whether that was down to pressure from community being like you're too involved or, or not, um, how they're handling everything isn't good. And a ton of projects who are actually adding value to the XRPL ecosystem uh, are being pushed out, are being pushed to other blockchains because there is more support there for them. So, you know, this isn't just a, a hate on XRP. This is something it's like, no, let's make some noise and make some change because there needs to be. Otherwise, that ecosystem is going to crumble more yeah. than it already is. Like the, the fact that it was doing more volume in a bear market than it is now is a joke. And the fact that the XRPL themselves have come out and lied about the data on chain and how much volume is going through it is also a joke because no ecosystem should lie about how much volume is going through it. Uh, so yeah, there, there is right. a problem. We have to make noise about it. Um, don't hate on these guys because they're, they're speaking up about hey, it. No, We're just like the doctor. We give, them the, yeah. we give them what they need to hear. Yeah, the know? medicine. I, I would say the best way to <laughs> disinfect something is with sunlight, not by yeah, hiding it. Exactly. And, uh, I want breaking news, breaking news. Uh, I just hit on the one hour chart. Bonk is going insane. Ooh. This is the five minute candle and uh, we've seen a huge, huge pump. This is... Is this really 10? Whoa, no, there's no way. Okay, 10 uh, Okay, hours. So we got in the last four hours. All right, nice little 12% pump in the last 12 hours or, or uh, four hours. 12% pump in four hours. That's nuts. That's insane. That's You said 12 hours? Uh, no, 12% in four hours. This wow, is, uh, the yeah, opposite. That's insane. Yeah, yeah, huge, huge pump right there. Well, we have Bitcoin whales buying over 100K in Bitcoin amid price drops. So it kind of comes to just the bouncer trying to get in all coins. It's, of course, going to roll over. But with the dip, every dip we get, whether it goes to 68K, whether we drop down to sixty-seven, sixty-nine thousand dollars $69,000, we are seeing a lot of buying power. People that think bulls are exhausted, 
No, they just keep on running and they're getting more and more hydration. They're going to continue to keep running and continue to keep buying at this point. So we are starting to see Bitcoin dominance grow as altcoins go in retrace mode. So we've been seeing a bit of a pullback. You know, everybody's been waiting for that altcoin season that everybody so much is anticipating. Everybody wants to watch their altcoins rip. However, the altcoins have retraced even more on a daily scale, which has pushed the Bitcoin dominance to almost 50%. Bitcoin's dominance grows despite retracement. The bulls tried to recover some ground during the weekend and attempt a, uh, saw a minor success as Bitcoin went as high as $66,000 before retracing. This is an old, old article, apparently. Either way, guys, you know, this is kind of continuing on. We still haven't seen a massive retracement or, uh, sorry, emergence of the altcoin dominance. It hasn't broken out. If you look at the top three chart, I believe is what it's called, correct? Which is the, of course, every altcoin on the market. Besides Bitcoin and Ethereum, it's every other altcoin. Uh, they haven't moved. They haven't broken out. Bitcoins remain the dominant pattern. And that comes, of course, off of the ETFs and everything that were launched in January. But this cycle is different. $86 billion in institutional money enters Bitcoin in just six months. And this is coming from the CryptoQuant CEO. Ki Young Ju tells his 340,000, or sorry, 340,000. 340,700 followers on the social media platform X that the level of Bitcoin investment from institutional investors is unprecedented this cycle, holding nearly almost $100 billion. Why, why did they add the 700 on the followers? That's just throwing people. Uh, it just threw me off. I was like, man, is that a, we're just adding more to that. And this is the chart that, of course, uh, Kelly had just shown you guys on the TA segment where you're looking at realized cap for short term whales is exploding. I mean, BlackRock came in, it was like micro strategy, buying, 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 buying. And the BlackRock came in and within six months, just obviously uh, it's unprecedented with how much growth we've well, seen it from it. I wonder why they don't have Tesla on here. Is it because Tesla sold? It doesn't really fit the narrative. Uh, I don't think, Q4 2020. That's a good point. I just, they don't hold that much compared to a micro strategy. And then, you know, BlackRock obviously holds way uh, more. No one except CZ holds much Bitcoin compared to <laughs> micro strategy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, it's, uh, well, CZ doesn't hold anything, right? Oh, yeah. It's yee hee. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, US spot Bitcoins uh, ETFs rebound with $418 million in inflow. So we've covered this a ton, DZ, but we continue to argue and follow Eric Balchunas <laughs> and James with what they've been saying, right? What is going on with these ETFs? I well, actually have uh, the latest data from HODL15, I believe it is. Uh, you know what? Eric and James haven't been tweeting out that uh, those infographics as much. And you know it comes from Bloomberg Terminal. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this is true. I wonder if some higher ups were like, hey, stop giving away the alpha for free. We're trying to sell this package for like 50K a month. Yeah. And you're just like giving out the alpha, you know, where our sales have slowed down because you keep tweeting all the good stuff here. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to find. Okay, here we go. HODL15. This is yesterday's uh, assessment. It was another strong net inflow day. $254 million. Wow. Despite the $300 million outflow from Grayscale Bitcoin Trust here. And so that means net buying of once you take out Grayscale, $550 million worth. Yeah, oh, that's I, huge. Oh, and I just, I'm, I'm doing some research on Polkadot and there's a Polkadot Grayscale connection you guys really got to pay attention to when we uh, have that polka dot video. It makes sure you have on notifications. It's going to be a lot of alpha in that one. Well, we have these Bitcoin ETFs taking off. So four Bitcoin ETFs. That was a great visual representation. It's funny that you brought up Bloomberg's global ETF asset race because if I scroll down here, check this out. Mind you guys, gold ETFs and everything were launched, of course, 20 years ago, right? ETFs are still, you know, pretty much a new asset class or a new financial vehicle. They've only been around for a few decades. Bitcoin ETFs are outperforming every single ETF that's ever been in existence by miles. I mean, iBit here and Fidelity's Bitcoin alone are dwarfing <laughs> the other ETFs you've seen on the markets here. So assets after 50 trading days on the market in billions. Woo! Look at, dude, Bitcoin is just dominating. And notice there's four different Bitcoin, uh, you know, fi filings now, here. Wait a minute, here, you're so. going to tell me BlackRock did best? No way, that's no not way. the BlackRock I know. No way, no way they don't own 75% of the market with iShares, no way. Well, Bitwise CIO Matt uh, Hugan says, inflows into spot Bitcoin ETS will continue for years. Here's why. So not only is it rebounding, DZ, but apparently it's going to continue higher and higher as ETF flows will continue for years. A good question asked about the new Bitcoin ETFs is what are the incredible inflows we've seen for the first two months represent a one-time surge or an indicative... Uh, what do you got? I'm sorry, Redbeard. Uh, Redbeard here. If you aren't aware of, uh, <laughs> I think it's uh, ABT, is that a, not Alliance Block, uh, GFI, which is Goldfinch, PNG, Hangolin, uh, GHST, I'm not sure, Arrow, which is Aerodrome Financial, and uh, DRG. Are you being Dragon Chain? Uh, are you even paying attention? Yeah. I guess you haven't watched the show. Like we, we've... Uh, 
almost done a deep dive on a few of those in a goldfinch protocol Ah, uh, it's it's not a bad one. I, I will say I don't hate Goldfinch. You know, uh, maybe some uh, to I check out. There's a lot of GFIs. It's a Goldfinch gold. in a long time. Hmm, like my, that's isn't that that's been around for a good amount of time. I'd say 2018. Uh, the Goldfinch uh, community is going to go nuts that we're talking about it right here. So if you type in GFI, there are a few uh, things will pop up here. Uh, there's other GFIs. I could be wrong. If we hit max here, you can see we'll launch. Oh, this is one of those ones. Where, yeah, the market cap looks like that. It is at an all-time high uh, as far as market cap goes, and uh, now it's around three hundred million. You know, a lot of the pump, you know, the the better pump is around here. Obviously, when now did it's, it launch? It's gone up a lot. Uh, that it... was early twenty two. No, uh, early twenty two. No, yeah, January. Oh wow, January it's not 22. not that old actually. Yeah, I'd have to do a deep dive Ooh. into that because it is, dude, that is parabolic. Mm -hmm. That is parabolic. Wow. Well, we have the truth coming out here is that most professional investors still cannot buy Bitcoin ETFs, and that will change the series of hundred yep. plus individuals. Yada yada yada. Guys, more inflows are coming into these markets. Uh, we have Google now allowing Bitcoin address data now available in Google search. So if you actually look on the index, the Bitcoin blockchain data will be showing up in search results. So the adoption, guys, it's coming. It's coming. It's here. Yeah, first was ENS, and now they have Bitcoin. So it was looking pretty good. I meant to ask you a question. All right, so your next is, let's say you're going to drop an NFT project mm -hmm. in three months. You're probably not going to choose XRP, would you? What would you choose? Would you try Bitcoin? Would you try Ethereum? Would you try Cardano? Uh... Well, what would you do? Solana? I mean, NFTs are a tough one right now. Um, honestly, one, one blockchain I'm seeing like ton of hype on is probably AVAX. They've Avalanche. Got, and Avalanche are doing an insane job uh, in actually interacting with the community as well. So they're actually like, once they find the good projects, they actually support them and like back them up on socials as well, which is crazy. They've done it with a ton of like their, their like staple meme tokens. Uh, what is it like? Uh, see, I don't want to say it. Cock Inu. That's what I'm actually yeah, looking at crazy. the chart of Cock Inu right yeah. here. It actually looks like it maybe kind of hit a level of support. You can yeah. see after this run up, it kind of had a nice little uh, point of control around surprise, surprise, 420. Ha 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 ha. And uh, now we're kind of hanging around that 420 level again. I know crypto is full of you know, degens. Uh, you know the thing that, is, that's right. That right there is about a 60% pump. Is that a bullish that pennant? High. I wouldn't be surprised to see this gain 60% in the next two weeks. You know what's crazy, though, is it's like a, a lot of um, foundations are now clicking on to the fact of how valuable meme tokens are in regards to actually building community. Yeah, and bringing volume now to the network. It. Yeah. yeah, It's, it's smart. It's what like, brings the people in. Yeah, you, you have know? to understand, majority of crypto is degenerate. So that's what they can relate to. Everyone's looking for that next big thing. Uh, and if there's hype from a community, if people are making noise, more time in crypto, it's the, you know, the crypto making the most noise or the one in front of everyone's faces is the one that's going to perform. Um, and, you know, these, these foundations, they need to embrace meme coins, uh, embrace where the community is looking and just suck it up, basically. Uh, what's um, your protocol, take baby? strategy with meme coins? Is it hodl to the moon diamond hands? Oh, bro. You know, I still have my doge from 70 cents. <laughs> it's tough, man. It, it all depends on like how, how exposed you are to it. You know, some people that go in heavy, then, you know, take out your initial investment and let the rest ride. I've done that with a ton of meme coins. And I just huddle till the end. Um, and then the other one is literally, if you literally put a little in there, it's just set and forget. Oh, with man. some oh. of my plays, honestly, uh, I've watched them go from, <laughs> one of my plays was a, a Solana meme coin. I watched it, I put in like a few hundred bucks, nothing, because I was just diversifying into a ton. I watched it all the way down to like seven bucks. Yeah. And then this thing ran up to like a few thousand. And I was like, if I, 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 just, that people, is crazy. I love when foreign people say literally. Um, it's always yeah. a good time there. And, That's what we do. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's all about taking profits. And if you have 99.9% .9 of your net worth and some meme coins and you live in your parents' basement, you don't have a vehicle, you don't have any property, you know, maybe that's not a good all uh, allotment of your assets. Not I was about to say, you're probably... And, and Jack, guys, I don't hate XRP. I hate not making money. And obviously, mm. XRP is not the avenue you're going to go to make that money. It's, it's making it's a for a good difference. stable coin, at least, though. You yeah, know? But it's, you know, it's... Uh, I, you, if you want even... Our, yeah, ish. I'm ish. trying to reach for something here, bro. I'm trying but, to like, reach. And I say it all the time. Right? I think it can go to $2 in a bull run. It just that, to people, is like, oh, that's bearish. I'm like, oh, well, you just... I just told you your but product's going to pump by $100 billion. I asked the chat what market cap would XRP need to hit to hit $10. The answer is $650 billion. It would need to outperform wow. Ethereum's last market cycle movement. To so it needs to be $10. twice as big as Ethereum today. Uh, 1.5x. Wow. That's so still bigger than Ethereum. And yeah. that's my point, right? I mean, you just had this man admits that he's seen a couple hundred dollars go to $7 on a meme coin and then turn into a few thousand. Like even meme coins are outperforming so this. Right now, you know? XRP <laughs> is only about 8% of Ethereum's market cap. And so it would have to reach that and then still perform another 50%. So yeah, it's and just you know, 
my, impossible. I want to say, my, I think my biggest thing from it too is like a lot of the XRP community, when I first came into it, they're all about follow the money. This is where the money's going. Yeah. But it's like now they won't even admit that they're wrong and that the money's going into Bitcoin. Like we have Runes protocol launching, which is going to bring meme coins to Bitcoin's ecosystem. You guys, that's a $500 billion untapped market that is going to just start existing on the Bitcoin halving. Uh, all right, I'll read, uh, read Wig Busta's uh, question. I'll let you answer it. XRP is making money if you buy the 30 cents, 20 cents, 14 cents. Mm -hmm. So why would I sell if I'm up? Well, that's a different story. I, I Personally, my average buy on an XRP is anywhere from like 14 to 20 cents. Yeah. So like, I, I, this is where I'm like in a privileged position. Right. Because majority of the market, you know, they buy in around a dollar. They bought in on the last pump and they're basically now stuck in this off of, basically a ton of people selling it a dream. Someone said, when is it going to be the liquidity to all? Um, that was its like, you know, base utility, wasn't it? The fact that it's on-demand liquidity is really where XRP's value like, actually comes from. But then you obviously have like the whole narrative side of things and marketing how many people are talking or paying attention to it, which is where the real stuff. That's comes. not what people want to hear. It's like, hey, man, I'm, I really want you to buy some XRP as well. And they're like, why? The ODL. Yeah. The ODL. I mean, it, like, it, the, the one thing I would say is it's big in like Southeast Asia. Like that's where it's being utilized. But yeah. it's like, it's nowhere else. And that's the problem. Um, it, I don't know. I, it's a tough one for XRP. Guys, I'm st I still hold. I'm not, I'm not necessarily as bullish as I used to be on it. Uh, I get everyone that's like very passionate about XRP. We, we've all been there. Um, but it's like uh, that investor literally said it perfectly that it's like opportunity cost. Like if you are in crypto, which is what everyone is in crypto for, which is to make money, then if you are just sitting yourself in a coin and not overexposing yourself to other stuff, um, like I was speaking to Josh about it uh, this morning, narrative trading, mm -hmm. like paying attention to narratives that are gaining a ton of attention. Uh, and you can literally just cycle through that throughout a bull run. Uh, Gary, uh, I think everybody on this panel would agree uh, stock and Ripple Labs would be a better buy bullish. than uh, XRP yes. token. Bullish. Yes. Why? Because they're selling the token to <laughs> profit the profits of the, the stock. <laughs> yeah. That's not a lie. I, well, I was saying no, that's real. And I don't want this to turn into like, just an XRP roast because like, there's no, a lot no. of legitimate... Like, that's what brought me into crypto. Three coins walking to you know, a bar. You got XRP. <laughs> they say the bar. Right. You got XRP, Aero, and Velo. Which one are you taking home? It's like, well, you know, XRP still is like on its first beer for six years. This you know, is an important conversation to have right now man we see the yes. the markets are alive if you're sitting on the sidelines sitting there stuck in this cult of hex <laughs> or xrp wow, you're gonna get there. wrecked look guys let me put one in the chat if you hold xrp put two if you don't put three if you hold it and understand that you need to diversify okay that's yeah. your three options because that's I'm, too much that's, that's too much, much. one no, if you got watch, XRP, you're gonna see it two if you're you... gonna see it you're gonna see it they're gonna put you threes. lost me at one sorry <laughs> <laughs> well you know speaking of one one billion in u.s treasury Ooh. notes has been tokenized on public blockchains this is a movement. This is a huge narrative, guys. Mm. Real world assets. If you're not following real world assets, well, you're going to get left behind because this is a narrative that is starting to really pop off. We've talked about Ondo on the channel, which is up 12% in the last seven days. And there's a lot of big movers. If you click on the seven day average here, I mean, wow, 800%, <clears throat> 700%, 500%, right? Big movers because this is going back to what Leo just mentioned which is narrative trading. If you want to make money in crypto, it is following trends, but it's being early to the next yeah. trends. So some that we've talked about on this channel, whether it's DeSci, uh, DeFi with, of course, Aerodrome, with your DEXs, which I think still are going to continue on. RWAs, that's taking place. Bitcoin meme coins, those are coming. If you follow these trends and get in early, that is where you're going to see the most substantial amount of value. Uh, and I've, honestly, if you have any takeaways on that too, Leo, with your well, no, I've been, uh, Tokenization has been a sector I've been paying attention to for like a good couple of years now. I think I was like, um, I hate to be the guy that said one of the first people like truly like getting people to pay attention to it because I made a video as soon as Larry yeah, Fink projects? at the beginning of like uh, 2023 basically came out saying that the, the future of the markets or the next generation of the markets is tokenization. Mm -hmm. um, top play right now, one that I think is like a staple everyone should pay attention to is LCX. That's a simple one. I know, you know, we all have our jokes about it, but it's like mm -hmm. LCX is, is an awesome token in, a, in and of itself. Um, you can and, buy that on Coinbase too. Yeah, it's listed mm -hmm. on Coinbase. They were once partnered up with uh, Binance back in the day. They actually left that partnership because they thought some illicit things were going on. They're um, very regulated. Yeah, very they're extremely regulated. regulated. And you know, everyone complains like, oh, there's not a ton of volume going through the exchange, uh, and that you know it's got a you know just small market cap, etc. But the reality is, is because they take being compliant and regulated to the extreme, uh, so they don't really pay for marketing. Um, although they do very well themselves in promoting it. Um, but then it's also the side of they are mainly used within Liechtenstein, which is where they're based, mm. and a few places in Europe. 
Um, but the reason why I think LCX has slept on Peter, a uh, good point there, uh, is because Mika regulations are about to come out in mm. uh, Europe, which are a comprehensive framework of regulations spanning across the whole of Europe, basically, which really just opens the market for LCX. Uh, and if there's one thing really going on in like the UK and Europe, it's that they are really forcing compliance, especially when it comes to like marketing and promoting things. Uh, and LCX, they, you put it this way, their market is about to massively expand. Uh, so a ton of users on the exchange. All right, going so through bullish it. on LCX. If we yeah. look at an uh, all-time here, it looks it like it has made some moves recently. I would say, high, obviously, uh, it's at an all-time high today. Yeah. actually, by market Wait, cap, by market oh, cap, huh. by market, it is not all-time all high by price. My bags and are so, uh, you know, it, it is at all-time highs. You know, probably will continue and will probably. There's only a few hundred million 45. market cap. Because yeah. two hundred and seventy. The other one moving with dollars. it is uh, Everest ID because they got very yep. similar licenses with it. Everest ID, you could see like it is just they're just pumping right now. Uh, so yeah, that is going to be a huge regulatory license that's created, and you're starting to see a lot of these emerge. I'm very curious to see what happens with if you guys want to get ahead of the game, ADGM because of course that was created by Richard Tang, who's now the CEO of Binance, and he's created that framework out of kind of his background from Singa the Monetary Authority of Singapore and everything. So pay attention to the projects that are getting those licenses, guys, because that's where you're going to see a lot of investments roll over into. Uh, real quick, do you like Chainlink? Yay or nay? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. He, he likes He's some like, Chainlink, everybody. Nah, I'm checking my LCX. <laughs> I, I think I sold it, man. Oh, my God. I'll be yeah. honest. I, I've, 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 full transparency, guys. I took heavy profits. Uh, well, when I say heavy, like less than 50%, but it was heavy. Um, uh, and that's because I got into LCX around 3 cents. Like, Ooh, so early. I, was, I was very early, early. to LCX, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I was talking about it on TikTok, so there's like proof of you that, are, but it's like... Uh, which is coming back soon, I heard. Yes, right? it is. I'll be, be back on anymore. TikTok soon, guys. Obviously, I've had some uh, problems. Shout out to whoever's doing it. Shout out to the uh, CCP, baby. Exactly. <laughs> um, but no, I'll be back on there soon. But no, tokenization as a sector is definitely one to pay attention to. Uh, it looks like it's having a rise again. The LCX out of nowhere has just started I, pumping I like crazy. I sold out my LCX February 15th. And what, okay. that was, that was I, on I its last pump then? Yeah, I can't remember what I bought. I might have bought Arrow. I'm not even kidding. So That's a fire trade, right, though. You're up, up like, if I did. well, I have a, cr a crazy question for chat here, guys. Guess, I want you guys to guess, what is the minimum annual income required to be, according to kind of just frameworks here, what does it require? What, how much money do you have to make to be middle class? Okay, I'm curious to know. Is it $55,000 a year? Is it $60,000 a year? Is it $80,000 a year? This is a really cool article. So here's the minimum annual income required to be a middle class in Texas. So I'm not going to go over just Texas. I want to scroll all the way down to this really cool chart here and zoom in. This is how much it costs. So the darker the color, the more it's going to require. So if you go to like, a like where are we at? We're in Georgia. So Georgia would be $65,364 to be considered middle class. There's like no way a family single. of four is living off 66. No, well yeah, no way. Georgia. Yeah. Uh, according that is a family of four that is yeah. a family of four uh, to be well, in the middle this class this is just misinformation to trick <laughs> americans into thinking they're not as poor as they are that's what yes, i was gonna say because it says california crazy. 69k that's what crap. the what you know the, what i know that number is fitting because you're getting f dude that's yep. not even enough for a shack in la like you're getting no, you know and New York, 81K. Which, yeah, again, BS, 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 look at chat, look at chat here. 175, 100K, oh 100K in San Francisco, you're under the poverty line. I was about line. to say, like, in California, you probably got to be on, like, minimum 100K to live relatively That's not even, comfortably. Like, dude, 45 minutes out of, like, your cities, like, you're talking, like, you go, like, out. Unless you want to go to the ghetto, like, Hemet or, mm. es you know, well, like, I would say Santee. Like, I don't know if you guys are from California, but those are like places you don't want to be if you're trying to raise a family of four. I got so a family of six and like, I am, you know, I just yeah, flabbergasted. I don't even know if you can get it. Drew's it, cranking them out, y'all. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. That's Drew active, cranks man. them out. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no problem. George is definitely a better place to be than uh, than than California if the family is uh, six. Claudio, $20 super chat. Thank you for the arrow. I was able to make a 3X. Took my initial investment, move it to Alluvium. You hey. guys are great. Claudio, oh. it's like when uh, the, the chat is making some funds, we're making some wins. Go ahead and hit that like button if uh, we put you in the right direction at least once. I'm sorry, that's the beauty of taking profits is then you can just cycle them the yeah. next. You know? Well, speaking of taking profits, Kathy Wood, guys, just sold off $31.5 million in Robinhood, the ones who sold out to the hedge funds. Yes, the, they did. The government shills. Yeah, she sold $31 million with that stock. So if you hold Robinhood, I don't know, Kathy's been a good trader. Uh, from what, you what I've heard, that? there's... There's uh, profit-taking strategies that they stick to because they like to return capital to their investors, and they're way up. I remember I bought publicly with her. You did, and I you copy announced traded it. her. I, I announced it. I did it live. 
I'm I'm way up. I'm up over 100%. Well, I checked yesterday. The only person not over 100% is going to be Leo because apparently these influencers could face prison time in the UK. Uh, Relax. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Relax. 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 No, you are definitely uh, less safe in the US than you are in the UK. Oh, yeah. Wanted to be that. yeah. <laughs> like, so yeah. the FCA jokes aside, chat, that was a good one. We have unveiled comprehensive guidance demanding that such adverts uh, be fair, clear, and non misleading to ensure consumers can make informed financial decisions. So pretty much says, hey, if you're going to talk about crypto, yeah. just disclose your fucking advertisements. I'm mm. so that's my one cuss word of the stream, F-word. guys. Like, F-bomb. be honest, be transparent, and be real with your community. If you're going to do that, your community is going to support you. They're going to love you. So if you're watching into this, guys, just be open with them. Wait, these communities yeah. are paying people? Charles Hoskins, and you know how much <laughs> I talk about Cardano? Give me some Cardano, man. Wait, you guys are getting paid? Money sign BZ. Send it yeah, it's, No, I was about to say, but that's what I was speaking about in regards to LCX. Is like that, that's one thing they are really like cramping down on in the UK and Europe is the marketing side of things. That's uh, awesome. And the lack of disclosure. Well, free speech uh, which laws is are just under attack in UK, period. You can't even tweet a meme. Everywhere. Like, yeah, yeah. Especially here, you know, as well. Oh, but no, the UK is compared to UK. The UK is far from perfect. Um, you know, it's daylight robbery over there. The mm-hmm. taxes are insane. Um, it's not exactly a good. The only thing they are really moving towards is the tokenization. Actually, something that was really funny. I spoke about on the on the basement last time I was here, um, and that was you know them coming out and proposing a digital pound or saying that a digital pound is coming. Yeah. And the actual like uh, fear that it invoked in everyone in the UK, like it caused like a massive revolt. So they've kind of like backtracked slightly. Um, but reality is, I, I still think CBDCs are coming. Like It's just yeah. natural progression for I mean, is there still money. paper being used a lot there? If I go to the local pub and what? I order a pint, Wait. are they expecting yeah. me to pull out a card, Apple Pay on a phone, or this, this wadded what, paper? This is what is actually like funny. is like everyone hates on like a progression to a CBDC, which is just digital money. Um, but reality is no one uses cash anymore. Like, have you looked at the, the data? Like it's yeah, so well, low. It's, no no it's, one holds. Well, or uses if you cash, think about like, the future, right? So you have a picture of a mind, like from when you were a kid. There's flying cars and there's robots and you know there's hyperloops. And then all of a sudden, you know, the character in the movie is going to buy a drink from the gas station. Do they pull out wadded paper mm-hmm. in the future? Stinky coins? No, they don't. And so it is inevitable, everybody. Yeah, but, but paper money is nasty. Fight yeah. it, kicking There's like and screaming. traces of feces from your dogs on still, it. Like... I will fight to the death for traces of feces on my money. Hell yeah. 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 I was going to say, yeah. someone just put a good thing that uh, buying crypto in the UK is getting even harder. I didn't even like tap into that. It's crazy. You know, like exchanges, it's like you can put in a maximum of like uh, 3K a month. Yeah, well, that's, and that's that's what people don't the, realize. That's yeah, why we it's, talk about it's crazy. You could like this is probably your last cycle where like meme coins are gonna be really accessible. Like mm. all these any altcoin using these Uniswaps, like there's a lot of people. Who was it that we just read oh. that said DEXs are gonna have to it was Dominic yeah. from yeah. ICP, Internet Computer Protocol, claiming for decentralization says that soon decentralized exchanges will have to KYC. That is BS. Can, can you imagine a dystopian future? You're in the UK and you go to buy your meme coin and a pop-up says, oh, you bought your daily allotment of Doge. Yeah. That's what we're facing, folks. Yeah, and I don't know, if, by the way, to be clear, I don't know if Dominic was just referring he thinks that's just what's going to happen or if I just know I saw the tweet. No, it probably will it. because there's a ton of, uh, if, you, if you are thinking like the government, they're seeing a ton of money and they're probably going to see it. There's so many weird things that happen in a, in a bull run. It's like a ton of companies come out with like relatively pointless things related to crypto. Usually a good like, uh, top indicator, you know, yeah. when they just start coming out with random stuff, like even uh, Google coming out with the wallet, um, yeah, w- wallet tracking. It's like, well, strangely enough, Bitcoin was kind of peaking when they did that. It's just like relatively pointless things. Um, but no, yeah, there's a de- KYC on a DEX is one probably I never going to happen, but probably what will happen is they're going to develop some serious type of tracking software. Well, what they'll do is they'll and, c- like if you want to use a DEX, yeah. what is everybody going to use? Coinbase wallet. Right, so you have to KYC the first step into yeah. it, and you're tracked already. You're, you're already yeah. cu- cut out. The only way you can truly get like a like currency without the government tracking is through mining it. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it's like it's it honestly just sucks where we're heading, and then we just keep being lied to. Whether it's big tech, whether it's these you know asset management companies, yeah. and that leads us to BlackRock again lying about not only Bitcoin for like forever, but now Ethereum. He actually came out and said Larry Fink, the CEO, sees approval despite security scare. So despite Ethereum potentially being a security. In an interview between Fox Business and Larry Fink, uh, he said that if it were to be announced the security, even if it was, like worst case scenario, they could probably still list it. Uh, Do you know BlackRock's record for ETF approvals? I actually do. It's like 500 and 
twenty or five hundred and seventy to one. We are now at five seventy six yeah. to one. Oh, the Bitcoin ETF yeah. went from five seventy yeah, six 576 576 to one. Oh. Uh, speaking of liars and stupid liar faces and stupid billionaire liars, SBF sentencing is today. We saw that in the chat. Uh, we're waiting for the sentencing. Uh, there's really no news besides the sentencing is happening. Looks like Scott's maybe watching it. He's showing absolutely no remorse. He just claimed there's always enough assets to pay back clients. That's a, a lie. He's burying himself further. He may actually believe his own BS. Wait, Drew, there's a meme. We got to share it. Mm. Uh, SBF be like, just got a new home. Thanks to crypto. So bullish. Oh, that's Dude, bullish. he's got a sick tattoo, man. Is that <laughs> like... Yo. And he got really tan. Is it a wolf tattoo? You know, Luna that's the Tara? Bahamas tan right there. And that's oh. uh, him and Caroline have matching tattoos. Oh, that's so adorable. You know, he's well, just cooking up meme coins from jail right now. <laughs> like, I guarantee the majority of the Solana meme coins is SBF in jail. Yeah, he has soap. Soap token. Mm. Uh, let's see. What else? Uh, what else do we got? Soap token. Uh, no, shank. what's a no? What's a fish? A sardine. Sardine token. Yeah, sardine. I'm shank. <laughs> that's going to be shank a shank token. token. Yeah. Shank token. He's Shank's trading sardines for some cigarettes. He's, yeah. he's getting addicted to nicotine out there. Well, we have Ethereum Network achieving one million validators, securing one hundred and fourteen billion dollars in staked ether. There was no smooth transition to get to that article, uh, but this just shows again, guys, more validators. Which you know, it it's not really helping a decentralization issue, but there is massive amount of money and inflow being locked up in this liquidity and DeFi, I think is going to continue to con uh, just continue to rip. And that's why ETHFi jumps 50% to record uh, may boost valuations for liquid restaking token airdrops. We've been talking about this restaking mechanisms uh, in DeFi and DEXs. They're all growing rapidly at that point and rolls over directly into Aerodrome, which of course, chat, uh, W's in the, can we just get some W's yeah. in the chat Bot. for all the wins? I mean, how many wins can we go through on these watches right now? Aerodrome, uh, and Velo have been the winners of this last week, but propels Coinbase's base layer two network to one billion dollars total value lock. Shout out to you, Drew. Shout out to you, Drew uh, DZ. This is crazy. When did you guys call this at? Like a fifty million market cap? Uh, Drew got in at eighteen cents. I got in at twenty three cents. So it was, it was moving, I think, the same day, maybe. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it moved, like, literally that morning of. Like, yeah, yeah. We, so Drew got in a little earlier than me. You oh, know, he has, mackerels. He, you that's know, he what has it's 17 called. 17 kids, so he's up at, like, 4 a.m. Um, so, <laughs> uh, yeah, I got in a little bit later than Drew. But, yeah, uh, we, we got a lot of W's in the chat. We like seeing this. I mm. love seeing the wins here. So this, I want to talk a little bit about this, because the spike in TVL suggests that the cryptocurrency can arrow continue higher community is becoming more and more interested in using base. Uh, it's almost mm. like you guys are talking about that. As per the latest DeFi Llama data, the total value locked on base, and can you pull up DeFi Llama as well? Uh, at well, Actually, we have right here, $1.062 billion. Here's the DeFi Llama chart. It is up to the right. Me and DZ have broke this down time and time and time again, guys. When you see that TVL start locking up and growing parabolically on these networks, whether it's base, optimism, aptos, that's where you want to pay attention to all of the products being developed. And that's why we're talking about these DEXs heavily now. Uh, there, is a, there is a play on base. Uh, there's the meme coin. We talked about it about maybe 10 days right? ago. Toshi, it's uh, mm, Brian yeah. Armstrong's cat. It's named after Satoshi Nakamoto. It's, it's one of the, it's the top, I believe, the top. And uh, he brought up Avalanche, you know, working with these meme coins. Uh, you know, they're working with the cock emu. Uh, base, I believe, is there's <laughs> a little bit of uh, talks here, too. They're going to maybe support Toshi. I don't know if we'll see full-blown Coinbase support. I'd be very surprised if we don't see this on Coinbase. Top base meme coin named after Brian Armstrong's cat. If you're a human being, that's probably going to affect your judgment slightly. You know, like if you're on the fence, I don't know if we should add it. We should not add it. It's named after your pet, sir. All right, go ahead and add the token. Uh, we are up 87% in the last seven days, oh. up 100%. I don't remember. It was like 10-ish days ago, so... A uh, good chance everybody's up. Coinbase are very well, strict with their listings now. Yeah. I will say that because they've had so many lawsuits from the SEC. I know for like they didn't even list their own DeFi. But it's going to have the Coinbase effect if they win. Yeah, Dude, the power they will have yeah. and the amount of volume that will go into tokens. And we're going to do a little talk about this really quick. But first, I want chat guys smash that like button. We need mm. to get the 350 likes right now. It'll take two seconds to do it. I'm going to drop. This is honestly straight alpha for you guys because there's Ooh. something we haven't mentioned <laughs> about Velodrome an aerodrome that you guys need to know about that could equate to another token that will is move Jerome as well. in the name? Uh, Jerome Powell is the money what? printer behind these. No, that's uh, not that's quite good. the alpha. That's good. But it is going to be just as good. But yeah, let's talk about this real quick because Coinbase effect is a real thing. You've been yeah. in for multiple cycles. I mean, 2021, that was like, it was Christmas that you wanted your token yeah. to get listed on Coinbase. So can you explain for the chat 
just what that means, what happens when projects get listed on Coinbase? And is I, it, does it still exist? I mean, it's just the two simple things. It's like um, accessibility and volume. Like it's accessibility. Suddenly, like someone who doesn't have much experience in crypto can literally just log into their Coinbase app. Pretty much, what is that? What's the percentage of people that have a Coinbase account? It's like insanely high, especially in the States. It's one of the first apps everyone goes to. Uh, and then the volume, because everyone's trading on there, so it's super easy to get. It's a simple on-ramp for crypto. If your crypto is literally only traded on Uniswap, for example, it's a DEX, which very few people, when I say very, I'm talking about in the whole conference of crypto, few people know how to use uh, and like, actually navigate a DEX correctly. Um, so yeah, it really is just accessibility, volume, uh, and it's basically free marketing as well. And if yeah. you want the alpha, <laughs> like we, we like to give you guys the tools. We like to give you the steps. I want to teach you how to fish and find the next arrow, find the next velo. Coinbase Assets on X, uh, at Coinbase Assets, and they front run what is going to be listed on there. <laughs> not everybody is paying attention to this. A lot of people just wait, oh, there's a new coin on my app. They're not looking at X. They're not looking at these articles. They're not reading the mediums. And so if you want to follow that, that's just a little alpha for you guys. And put that in the toolbox. Well, I'm very proud of chat for hit smashing that like button, guys. So I'm going to drop the alpha anyways here first. Uh, as you guys approach that 350 like mark. So the alpha here, guys, is the team at Velodrome Finance, a decentralized exchange on OP mainnet, strategically added Aerodrome to base. They were the first ones. Mm -hmm. So they are the same company, they're the same entity. And I don't think I've actually elaborated that enough on this channel. And so if they've done it on Optimism, they've done it on base, both projects have been successful. Do you think they will launch it on another chain? Yeah, why not? Exactly. Yeah. And that is what you guys want to watch. So you want to follow Velodrome. You want to follow Aerodrome. You guys are already making tons of money off this. Watch and pay attention to see if they decide to launch any other chains. I saw a good question in chat about this. What's that? What is the top market cap that you think uh, Aerodrome I, could I said could it hit? yesterday. I'll say it again. I'll, I'll walk <laughs> you through it. it. I, I've thought about this. Yeah, I have updated it. So we go to Aero. You can see it right here. At first, I said a billion. I was like, you know, we might turn around at, at a billion. Look, uh, we have got pretty close to that. We're above 600 million right now. But I, then I had to do a reassessment. I, I didn't, that was just kind of a number, a suspiciously round number. Then I said, well, let me actually try and do some real analysis here. And I found out that uh, if you look here for market cap, it was right around 22. I think, yeah, 21. Yeah, it was, it was 22 point something right there. So Uniswap did hit a $22 billion market cap. Now the question isn't, okay, so no, let's compare to what we think Uniswap will be this cycle, because we're talking about this cycle. So do we think Uniswap is going to pass $20 billion market cap? I do. I don't know what you guys think, but I think it's going to potentially hit 30, 40 this full run. And so then you start looking, all right, so Uniswap is going to say hit $35 billion market cap. So then what is base uh, DEX? What is the base equivalent going to hit? And then you start looking, well, oh, it certainly can probably do 10% of that. And that would be a $3.5, $4 billion and I, market cap. And we had a great discussion on this because we we're like, let's be real too, this is base. Well, we're like, not done Can though. we compare it to BNB? Do you compare it to, you know, like I think it could do more well, than that. Well, you know? I, I have to check the tokenomics. I can't do that much of a deep dive right now. Uh, but 625, then you're looking at it close to about a 7X. Uh, so now you're looking at pretty close to around $10. I wouldn't be surprised to see a lot of selling pressure around 10. So arrow to 10, mm -hmm. quite doable. Yeah. You know what was a good example of this was Jupiter. Yeah, a ton of volume going through it, but it was undervalued for what it was. Mm -hmm. uh, they launched their token as you always do. You have a crash on launch because tons of people were airdropped. And I sold half. Liquidate their liquidate their tokens, which is normal to do. You should realize. Profits. Yeah, and I put in a Solana. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Solana then pumped. So but that was mad. like a, a re like uh, nothing is easy, guys. Cause it takes conviction, but it was a relatively easy trade in regards to if that is the main dex on Solana, and Solana is getting all this hype and volume going through it because of meme coins. Uh, then by default, you would expect that DEX token to appreciate in value. Let me, uh, I'm going to give <coughs> chat more alpha right here for this. So DeFi Llama, guys, you want to use this website, DeFi Llama, okay? Uh, this, I'm on Optimism right now. You can see how much value is locked up in these ecosystems. Optimism, if you guys are subscribed to our channel, you would know that yesterday we covered they're investing $3.3 .3 billion into their projects and their ecosystem. So three times the amount of value locked that is currently sitting there today. If you guys go on this website, go down and scroll down to the volume tab. You can go all the way down. So skip this first part, skip the chart. You go down where it says protocol rankings and it says fees, revenue, or volume. It will be on fees. Make sure you guys click on volume here and sort it by seven days in volume. You'll notice that Velodrome is leading that. 
But then there's a Dex right here, Beethoven, Wombat. I haven't looked into a ton of these, but this is how you can find a lot of underrated, undervalued projects. Like, check this out, Velodrums, 117 million in volume, has uh, 17 million in the last 24 hours. Try to find the ones that, you know, look, 20, 21, uh, 21 million, 34% gains, 18 million on Wombat Exchange. They may not be the chains. biggest ones and check different chains, right? This is how you can find those early DEXs and those aerodromes and those velodromes of those ecosystems is by clicking on that volume and checking it out. Uh, moving on here that we have Athena here at $1.3 billion yield earning protocol to debut governance token next week. Uh, and we have Tether's Dark Crown, most used stable coin in Illicit crypto chain. Why do we keep talking about Tether with... Uh, illicit activities like the u.s dollar is obviously used for more illicit activities because uh, some world. would say the ic aka intelligence community want these stories floating around hmm. yeah well that's true well you they know they're now working with the government though like pretty heavily tether yeah they're yeah, they're like, close to they the won US with the nidag there's oh, like they ties love freezing oh, your yeah. funds they 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 could basically uh smell the the the, the ice forming oh yeah. i, I, I think would they just say, hate them because they successfully yeah. created something that the u.s government wanted complete control it, of it's which been was, proven time and time again working with the government doesn't protect you uh, mm. What do we got here? We have, I know where 589, where did the 589, reference? Mm -hmm. the 589 dollar <laughs> come from? Is that, that a Diddy reference? Was it from? Any project that goes to the SEC. And gets, ooh. Should your country <laughs> extradite Julian SEC Assange? SEC or influencers. Uh, yeah. You know, I know yeah. Where, yeah. <laughs> well, I wanted to answer one last Chill. question here. Someone said, I know where 589 uh, dollars comes from, from XRP. Is it true that that comes from the Simpsons? That was a fake meme. Yeah, like, and it barked it on Reddit, where right? It definitely came from. Isn't that yeah. well, that's the other issue that you know? There's all the riddles and everything that exists within there. Yeah, I, I also want to say, like, the numerology. Word, I know it's yeah. it's hard to see it, like when they're saying Venus crosses uh, Jupiter. In, like Josh's video is like saying sell, sell your XRP. That's what to, like re in relation to opportunity cost, you'd make more money if you're exposing yourself to assets performing better. The main thing we're trying to expose here today is not to hate on XRP or, or me specifically. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to expose the fact that there is a systemic problem on the XRPL and how they support projects building, and they do not have an interest in truly supporting their ecosystem. And we've seen how successfully, like the correlation between a strong ecosystem supported by its foundation and token appreciation, like go hand in hand, and they are completely yeah. neglecting theirs. That's all we're trying to outline. They've so said like, it perfectly. Yeah, don't hate it in the stream. Go on. I don't want to swear. Go on Twitter and like at Ripple and say do something. Because yeah. that's where the problem is. You're coming off more of a whistleblower, not a hater. Yeah. yeah. Like, I'm just trying to expose there is a problem. Like, look at the biggest projects which are pumping the most volume through that ecosystem. And if they're saying, like, we're probably going to move away, that's yeah, probably we, a telltale sign. We need to sign. make FUD great again. You know, great again. Yeah. I think it's hey. the right term here. Because I, I fear, say, uncertainty, and doubt matters when you care about your project. You know, if you just push yeah. it off, that's FUD. Don't talk about it. Mm. Like, you have to talk about and address these issues. Yeah. And it comes back to, again, guys, it's, not me hating, like I've said, it can go to $2. But like people take that as, you're a hater. That no, is terrible. No. That is detrimental to our price action. It's like, no, I just think there's more success and more potential in seeing an increase in your portfolio. I, I think Drew elsewhere. would agree, and I think a lot of viewers would agree, and you'd probably yeah. agree. Uh, we need to bring back bullying mm. to, yes. some level, <laughs> to some level. To some level. Not where micro kids level. are like, you know... Not wanting to, you know, exist anymore, but you know, a little swirly did, to the weird kid. Hey, you know, did you see they banned kickball? He had a coming. Or they <laughs> they banned dodgeball in middle schools yeah. and high school. You know what? I remember uh, we had a, a huge jack yeah. dude that looked like a man amongst boys. You know, and he was uh, he ended up getting like a college scholarship, and he was a baseball player. And then there's every now and then they wouldn't be in the weight room, and they would be with those normies in gym class. I remember him during dodgeball. You could hear the ball hit the the wall on the opposite side. It was scary. That fear was needed. And you know what? It, it made us little prepubescent 14 year olds grow up a little bit. We needed it. Guys, I just want to outline that comment. XRP is its own crypto network. It doesn't need Ripple. They don't need Ripple, but XRP is still the native token of their ecosystem. If there's demand in the ecosystem, there's demand for the token by default. And they're uh, selling XRP. Yeah. Which it, it affects the XRP. Like the XRPL would not exist without Ripple as well. We yeah. haven't even talked about the fact that they're just basically just a bunch of CBDC simps that are walking us all into a digital dictatorship and trying to pump their bags on the way there. I don't respect anyone that's yeah. on that side of the fence. Yeah. I think there's a good part of the XRP community, though, that I think are really good. Like they understand that the current traditional system is broken and that there is a need and a structural shift that you know, needs to happen soon before this money printer just keeps going and inflating and hyperinflating our economies. And like they're, you know, Swift was an old system, but like obviously it's being replaced now with, they're partnering with CCIP through Chainlink, right? They're fixing their systems. And so I think there's a world where both can exist 
And we need to talk about that utility because there's a lot of utility within cross-border payment remittance systems. It's a really good factor of the crypto industry with making everything more efficient, faster, cheaper, better. It's just, you know, having this sense of realizing what global capitalism means. And that means in a capitalistic society, there's going to be competitors. There's going to be yeah. competition. And there's, where there's competition, there's going to be competitors that are trying to bring you down. And that's this case. And that's why diversifying is so important. It's why when a venture capital or a VC looks at a new industry, they don't go, you know, I'm just going to buy Aerodrome. They go, okay, we're we like Aerodrome. We like this industry. Instead of putting all $1 million in the Aerodrome, let's buy 10 other products similar to mm -hmm. it. And they'll invest into another 10 projects that are similar to it because they're casting this net. Because they know one or two of them will be a big fish. It will make them a 10X. It will make them a 100X. And they know two or three of them will go to zero. They just know it's a numbers game at that point. And that's how you got to diversify I, those I'm portfolios. I'm loving the dodgeball quotes. What's a ZJ? Um, but, you know, you brought up competitors, Cobras. you brought up hey, competition. I got one, finally. Uh, there, there's a really, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a great movie. It's a fantastic movie. Uh, ben Stiller's top two. Top, yes. uh, I, I do want to share a little alpha here. You know, there's a little bit of a story here within this story that no one's talking about. Sweet token rushes $2 peg in a rally near all-time high. There's, and Chad, I'm going to ask you before I say it. There's a coin that pumps with SWE almost all the time. And it's, it's for a dumb retail reason, but what is the coin that you often see pump with SWE? And so it reached new uh, year in uh, year high trading price, maintained positive upward trend over the past couple months, $2. If we go down here to the charts and we look at SWE, you're actually going to see it uh, near, near another it coin SWE. in the top 50. Is it say? Go to max. It is say, Ooh. everybody. Say and SWE always move together. I literally, <laughs> I know it's because they, they're spelled pretty similarly. They're around 40 to 50 in market cap. And uh, Say is right here. It just uh, started moving. Sui is right there. Look how close they are. The amount of times they're just literally next to each other. As they slowly climb up this top 100, so Sui will pull up Say. Say will pull up Sui. I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, Say follow Sui. I, I, I would have to agree. And, and the last two articles we hear for you today is an Amazon $4 billion deal completes $4 billion deal with Anthropic, deepening its strategic AI partnership. The only reason why we're highlighting that is because FTX, SPF himself, had a majority stake in that AI startup, Anthropic, for $884 million, uh, with the bulk of it going to the UAE. So uh, It belongs to his mm, cellmate now, but mm, now he gets protection. Uh, and if he owned that, does that mean he's going to get a massive portion of that $4 billion? Questions that we need answered. Yeah, exactly. Well, quite, quite clearly. <laughs> yeah. No, they were yeah. borrowed, y'all. They were borrowed. borrowed. Um, he didn't know that it was actually hurting investors. So, you know, he's sensitive. Well, other than that, guys, we have Bitcoin Layer 2 starting to take off. We have Veller's native token launching on Bybit, which is going to be a DeFi protocol that is going to be bringing more liquidity to Bitcoin. We have Bob here, a hybrid Layer 2 blockchain mixing Bitcoin and Ethereum, raising $10 million. It is starting to take off in that sector as we approach that Runes protocol launch on the Bitcoin halving. Guys, if you enjoyed today's episode, make sure you smash that like button. Give Crypto with Leo here a mm. follow on Twitter and TikTok. And Leo, dude, thank you for joining us today, man. Thank you for having me on. Anything you want to just tell the audience that's maybe kind of a little tip that you uh, have for being in crypto so long? I, honestly, I think you, I told you this morning, it's just, guys, narrative trading. Understand how to truly take advantage of it. Uh, pay attention to what everyone is talking about. Or at least, like, big catalysts. That's really what it is. It's paying attention to catalysts early. Uh, Larry Fink, when he talks, I'll listen. I don't care. What's the, yeah, what, so let me ask you that. What's the best way for someone that's new to crypto to find emerging trends? That's a good question. Watch uh, this channel. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you follow this guy's content. I was going to say, watching ah, these yeah. daily updates, like there, there, there isn't really a way, unless you like have a system or a way that you check the news every day, every single morning. Uh, this show's great because it just aggregates all the key stories for you. So I'd just say, keep an eye on here. Uh, you guys have already proven that point by highlighting a ton of projects and making some great calls early. Um, you know, I've done it myself, but that was truly down to like, when it's shoved in your face, people don't want to listen. I knew I was doing something right when everyone was hating on my content. When I was talking about uh, tokenization like two years ago. Uh, and you know, the, the returns speak for themselves now. And here we are. So yeah. I would say one thing that isn't going away is Bitcoin L2s. They keep bringing it up. Guys, the fact that, that you even mentioned it earlier in here and I wanted to say something. I don't know if we need to end, but uh, basically it's like, the institutions are now here and even now what the market is doing the fact we're making all-time highs prior to the halving we have never seen anything like this before like this has never happened in history so i truly believe this bull run is going to be one, one like no other that Ooh. we've seen uh i think it's going to set new boundaries basically and uh whether things are going to be the same afterwards all i do know is that the inflow of money going into bitcoin is 
yeah, out of this world. It's substantial. Right. And XR, please hit that like button on the <laughs> way out, folks. We appreciate it. Thank Cheers, you very y'all. Much. Honestly, thank you guys. Peace.